Proudly, we hail. City, where the American stage begins. Here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story today is entitled, They Went that Away." This is the story of five saboteurs on the loose in western Germany and only 15 miles to a border where they would find safety. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Attention high school graduates, get on the Freedom Team today by volunteering for enlistment in the United States Army. You can help America save the peace and save freedom too by enlisting today. Full details at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, They Went That Away. A corporal of the guard making the rounds of his post in an encampment in West Germany suddenly tripped and fell flat on his face in the darkness. What made him gasp in horror as he sprawled to the ground was the instant realization that his foot had struck an object, a human body, the prone figure of a soldier, a soldier who was bound and gagged. Sergeant of the guard, post number three! Post number three was a small building. It had a thick wooden door reinforced by iron plates. Its one tiny window was laced with steel bars. It was used as a temporary place of detention. It had housed five men who had been captured trying to sabotage the installation. They were being held there, awaiting interrogation. Now they were gone. Somehow they had broken through the locked massive door and overpowered the sentry. He had no explanation. I was standing in front of the door, sir, like I was supposed to. Suddenly I felt someone's hand around my throat. I couldn't yell out. I tried to squeeze the trigger on my M1, but it was knocked out of my hand. Someone tackled me and I was down on the ground. Before I knew it, I had that gag around my mouth and I was being tied up. All five of them jumped me, sir. Did you notice anyone at all on your post? Anyone who might have been able to get that door open for them? No, sir. Like I said, sir, it happened all of a sudden. And I was just jumped, that's all. All right, Jones. I guess that is all. Five saboteurs on the loose. And only 15 miles to the border where they would find safety. To travel those 15 miles, they would have to pass alerted units of soldiers plus civilian authorities. One thing operated in our favor. Between the army post and the border were only three small towns. There was no big city where the men could lose themselves in a crowd. Just small towns and open fields. We had a good chance of getting them. We've alerted the civilian authorities in Wildesheim, Godesburg, and Hochstadt. A Company is headed for the border now. B and C Companies are starting to work over the terrain. What is it, Harry? The Colonel, the Chief of Police of Hochstadt wants to know if you want him to arrange for a posse of civilian volunteers to help with the search. Tell him yes. They've also got bloodhounds out. Good. All right, all units keep informed by radio. We want to be ready to close in on the first lead. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it, the rain is starting to come down in buckets. It won't help the bloodhounds, sir. It won't help the saboteurs much, either. It's not going to be too comfortable out there. Colonel Collins. Who? Well, bring him in. How about this, Harry? A lead already. Well, Sergeant, if you are a sergeant, what are you doing in this area? Well, sir, I didn't know this was a uh, restricted area. It isn't. I don't recognize you. You're not in my unit, are you? Uh, no, sir. I'm, um, I'm Sergeant Arthur Thomas, A Company, 4th Signal. They're in Frankfurt, aren't they? What are you doing so far from home? Well, I'm on a furlough, sir. Let me see your papers. 
Well, that's what I tried to explain to your men, sir. I must have lost my wallet. How do you explain those clothes in that suitcase? Oh, sir, I'm on furlough. Those are my clothes. What man would carry five different uniforms on a furlough? What did you need them for? More important, Sergeant, if you are a sergeant. How come all these clothes are of different sizes? Well, so you're not a sergeant. You're not a soldier. You're not even an American. Well, at least we've got you. Now then, you were supposed to meet those five who escaped and provide them with our uniforms. That was the plan, wasn't it? Where were you supposed to meet? Well, I have nothing to say, sir. You're a prisoner now. But I'm a soldier, sir. I'll give you my name, my rank, and my serial number. It won't work. You weren't captured in your uniform. You were taken in ours. That makes everything different. You know that, don't you? You could be shot as a spy. Now, where were you supposed to meet them? I have nothing to say, sir. Take a half hour or so and think about it. Lieutenant Dale, keep two men on him and watch every move he makes. That's all. Well, Harry, their schedule has got to be upset now. Yes, sir. But how badly? This fellow was supposed to have met them somewhere. He was supposed to have had our uniforms for them. The plan must have been for them to be disguised as Americans. That part backfired anyway. Well, sir, even if they had prepared for that eventuality and had another man ready with clothes, it's a cinch that right now they're bound for a rendezvous that won't come off as planned. Colonel Collins. Who? You did where? Good, I'll wait here. Lieutenant Cameron used his head. He figured the place where this fellow was captured would be close to where the saboteurs would plan a meeting. So he had the area thoroughly searched, and they nabbed one of them. One? That means they must have split up, sir. Okay, one down and four to go. The fugitives didn't split up, however. The man who was captured had lost the others in the rain and the darkness. His companions were still making their way toward the border. But they were too clever to attempt a direct route. They were cutting southward and then westerly toward the general direction of the place from which they had escaped. They were armed, they were dangerous. They were men who knew they had very little to lose. They were soldiers under discipline, still obligated to carry out a mission. How did you break out of the room? Looks like we can't get a thing out of them, sir. Where are your friends? Yeah, hold it a second. This is Colonel Collins. Bring in the other one. How were you able to open the lock? Oh, thank you, Lieutenant. Now then, uh, this man in our uniform, do you know him? Close mouth group we have here. Well, soldier, it's lucky for you you missed him. Because if you were captured in our uniform the way he was... It'll be just too bad for you, as it's going to be for him. Take a soldier outside, Lieutenant. We'll talk to the sergeant. Tell me, how is it in your army when a man is caught the way we caught you, huh? What do you people do to a man when you want the same kind of information we want from you? All right. If I don't talk, I'll be shot. If I'm lucky. You'll be lucky. If I do talk, then what? You're just an ordinary prisoner of war. Yeah, how do I know? How can I be sure you'll keep your word? You'll have to trust us. All right, I trust you. Could I have a drink of water? Give him some from the cooler, Harry. It's been a long night for me. Here you are. Thank you. Hey, hey, what's he putting in his mouth? Stop him! Stop him! Oh. I was too late, he swallowed it. Oh, some pill to be used as a last resort. Uh, Colonel Collins. Oh, of course. It's General Bailey. Good evening, Colonel. Evening, sir. Who's that man on the floor? <clears throat> you, uh, you can get up, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Well, what were you doing on the floor, Sergeant? Were you ill? The sergeant had just taken poison, sir. 
I see. I see. Collins, who is this man? Who are you, Sergeant? My name is Kane, sir. I was sent down to assist on the problem. Uh, sir, in line with the suggestion sent down by your headquarters, we're trying to indoctrinate the men here with escape tactics in the event they should ever be prisoners of war. Oh, is this sergeant one of your men? Uh, no, sir. He's supposed to be a fifth columnist who was captured. Uh, we took five men, sir. We told them they were prisoners. We told them they would be given an escape opportunity. Now, their problem was to see if they could make their way through 15 miles of hostile territory as escape prisoners. Well, that's a good realistic exercise, Colonel. Well, sir, we're playing it straight and we're playing it seriously. We asked an outfit 200 miles from here to send us some men who would act as simulated fifth columnists to aid in the escape. We wanted strangers who would be unknown in this area. That's good. Now, then, we are presenting these men with the same problems they would encounter if they were actual prisoners of the enemy. Yes, sir, uh, with this exception, naturally, that they can't use any real rough stuff to make good their escape. All they can use is their wits. Mm -hmm. Have any been taken yet? Just one of them. Any trace of the others? No, sir. But it'll be rough. We have the civilian authorities cooperating, just as those authorities would in reality. Civilians are asked to report any suspicious-looking strangers. Sir, we even have Boy Scouts out in the field. <laughs> well, then, Colonel, you've duplicated every condition an escaping prisoner would face. We hope so, sir. It's a two-sided maneuver. On one level, we learn how to go after SKPs, and on the other, and more important, our men learn how to escape. Well, I think we can learn something from this, Colonel. I'd like to sit in and watch what happens. Colonel Collins. Where? Good, we'll all move out there. A woman living on a farm just outside of Hildesheim reports four men walking along the road toward town. We've thrown a cordon around the place. I think we've got them sacked up. Well, I hope not, Colonel. <laughs> Sir, may I ask who the general is rooting for? Well, I'm rooting for everybody. The four escapees moved into the town of Hildesheim. The small, narrow streets were dark and deserted. The rain kept pelting down. They needed shelter. In a little while, they knew they would need food. Obviously, the border could not be approached in a direct route. They would need time to think, to rest, to form plans. But these are luxuries never granted to men who are on the run. Off in the distance was the sound of an approaching vehicle. Could it be a military automobile? Or one that belonged to the local police? Or even a civilian? It made no difference. Everyone was alerted against them. They huddled against a building and tried to hide in its shadow. A truck appeared out of the haze of rain and darkness. It stopped and caught them in its headlights. There they were, revealed. And suddenly a strange thing happened. The lights went off. The side door opened. Hey, in here, quick. Who are you? Fifth column, buddy. Get a move on. Come on, come on. You all in? Yeah. How did you know we'd be here? All unit commanders. Fugitives should be in Hildesheim, surround town, and send in patrols. Yeah, we got us a All short way radio. Commanders. We're following every Fugitive order. Fugitives should be in Hildesheim. You must have missed Scotty. Surround he was captured with the uniform. It's a tough break. Where can we go? Uh-oh. Look up ahead. Huh? Police. Yeah. They're starting to search the houses. That one they're going into was where I was supposed to take you. Oh, that's out. Hey, Powers, can't we get any chow? Well, there was supposed to be chow and a place to sleep for you in there. It's out now. But what are we going to do? Hey, we're setting up a roadblock just ahead. It looks like they're going to search every vehicle. Can you back up? No, it's too late. They see us. If we turn around, they got to get suspicious. Guys, we've got to make a break for it. Oh, Powers, I'm big. I know. Come on, we've got to get out and run for it, guys. Men scattered. They ran down unfamiliar alleys and strange streets looking for a hiding place. Doors were locked. There were no hiding places. Squads of police and soldiers ran down the streets in pursuit. Civilians added their assistance to the hunters. Up the street! One of them went this way. I saw one! He's hiding in back of that building! One by one, they were captured and brought to the colonel. Tired, hungry, dispirited. Well, is this all of them, Colonel? 
No, sir. One is still at large. I guess that would be Corporal Powers. Good man. We'll have him soon. Oh, well, you've searched the town inside out, Colonel. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, They Went That Away. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Young men, as high school graduates, you can get a free education in an exciting technical career of your choice. Today's modern United States Army is offering you your choice of 87 top-notch courses and a reserved seat in that school before you enlist. Now, for complete information on this new Reserve for You training program, drop a postcard to RPC, Governor's Island, New York 4, New York. And we'll be very glad to send you in the mail, no obligation, our little booklet called Reserved for You, which will give you the complete details about the new Reserve for You training program. And, of course, if you happen to be close by a recruiting station, drop in and see the friendly people down there. They'll give you an application blank. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of They Went That Away. They were trying out a new problem. The idea was to teach men who might become prisoners of war escape tactics. It should be the sole aim and mission of every man who is taken prisoner to try to escape, to rejoin his unit, to become once again an effective soldier. But you must do more than just tell a man his objective is escape. You must teach him how to do it. How, for example, is he supposed to make his way through miles of hostile territory? How is he to elude the vast network of military and civilian authorities who will be deployed against him? A successful escape obviously requires nerve, resourcefulness, and ability to improvise. Well, these things must be developed, and they can only be acquired through practice and experience. The experiment we are dramatizing today involved five men. Four of them were quickly recaptured. It was interesting to learn why they had failed so completely. Well, soldier, how about you? Sir, I guess I was just so tired, I just didn't care. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a valid reason. It happens. And you? Well, sir, the plan went wrong. We were supposed to meet a man who would have American uniforms, and we didn't. And, well, I, I guess I just had no more confidence. I just couldn't think quickly enough. And you have to develop an ability to improvise. It isn't easy. Sir, it was just so miserable out. And I'd lost my shoes and... Well, it sounds bad, sir, but I couldn't run anymore. My feet were getting scratched and cut up. I, I, I just gave up. I didn't know it'd be anything like this, sir. Maybe if we could try the thing again, I'd do much better. I know I would. I know you would too, soldier. It's a strange and a new thing, this business of being a prisoner. I... I think it's been a useful and revealing exercise. Uh, begging the general's pardon, it isn't over yet. One man's still missing. They were only looking for one man now, a corporal named Powers. And in a sense, Powers had already scored a moral victory. Even if he were captured before he made it, he would have accomplished something. He would have forced the enemy to waste valuable time and manpower to hunt him down. Soldiers, civilians, and policemen would have to be diverted from other important work and spend uncomfortable hours searching for him. Powers had no more experience than his four companions. His IQ was no higher. His stamina was no greater. When the carefully laid escape plan went wrong, the other four were quickly rounded up. Yet Powers was still at large. You might ask yourself, why? Maybe Powers was the first to realize the basic importance of this new thing they were trying to learn. Or maybe Powers was just blessed with the ability to give it that extra ounce of effort that makes the difference. Powers also ran down the street and around the back of a house. 
Powers saw a basement window that was open. Powers took a chance and went in. He found himself in a dark cellar. So far, his entry had been unnoticed. So far, so good. But for how long? Where was he? He didn't know. How long could he remain here without being discovered? He didn't know that either. But right now, at this instant, he had an indefinite space of time to catch his breath, to relax, to collect his wits. But he knew he was like the fox who had temporarily eluded the hounds. He would have to make his move. But where? How? He had a small fragment of a chocolate bar in his pocket. He sat down and chewed on it. He had a pack of cigarettes. And nothing in the world would have been as good as a smoke right then. But he didn't dare to light one. He saw a door across the room. He walked over to it. Opened it and saw a flight of stairs. He paused and listened intently. Upstairs, a party was in progress. It was a gay celebration, so no one heard him moving about the basement. He heard voices upstairs as the door opened. It was a policeman asking the host some questions. Powers understood enough German to catch the drift of the conversation. Have you seen any suspicious strangers, Carl? Nine, Friedrich. Lucky you are off duty, Carl. The rest of us are busy with this. Well, have a drink, Friedrich. Can't, Carl. Peter Zane. So, here he was in a policeman's house. But everyone was concentrating on the party. Powers made the bold decision. He made his way up the stairs. A hall led past the big living room where the party was in full swing. <laughs> If only he could find his way to the hall closet without being seen. He tiptoed past the door. Past the gaiety. And there, there was the closet by the front door. He opened the closet, and there was what he was looking for. A German policeman's coat and a helmet. He slipped on the long coat which dropped low beneath his knees and put on the stiff policeman's helmet. Now, he walked out the front door and walked down the street. Now, his problem was to avoid civilian cops who could recognize him. But he was halfway home. He could certainly fool any American soldier. He saw two of them in a jeep. He called to them, assuming a slight accent. Soldiers! I saw him run into that basement. Let's go. Howard jumped into the Jeep and raced the motor. Now at least he had wheels. This Jeep was the roadblock. He had made it now, maybe. At least he could get out of town. And there was a uniform change for him in the Jeep, too. The rain had stopped now, and one of the soldiers had left his raincoat and steel helmet in the back seat. He had just a little bit of time before they would know he had fooled them. He was on the road now, away from town, heading for the border. Up ahead, he saw lights approaching. They were probably looking for a man in a cop's uniform driving a stolen jeep. He threw off the German policeman's coat and grabbed the soldier's raincoat and helmet and drove the jeep off the side of the road. He jumped out and headed across the fields. In the distance, he heard the baying of hounds. These were civilians. Well, maybe he could handle them in his soldier's raincoat and helmet. Hey! Who is? Hey, I'm lost. A soldier? Yeah, I lost my outfit. I'm supposed to be at the border. Yeah, what make it lost on a night like this? Well, how do I get back? Straight along this road. Some of you go with him. The escaped man could just as easily be headed that way. At the border, 
were a platoon of soldiers waiting. His helmet and raincoat could fool civilians, but not them. They would wonder why he had no weapon, start asking questions, and then that would be it. Just past them stood a man with a white armband, the umpire. If he could reach the umpire. Hey, Lieutenant, that guy. Guy's running past those trees. Where? Get him! He ran with them and suddenly doubled back. By the time anyone noticed, it was too late. Powers had tapped the waiting umpire's shoulder. He was home free. The umpire grabbed his hand and shook it. The soldiers who had been detailed to hunt for him gathered around and pounded his back. You would think he had hit a home run with the bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth inning. Well, he had done something much better than that. He had made his way all alone through 15 miles of hostile territory. He had eluded hundreds of soldiers and policemen who had all the advantages on their side. It was only a game true, but soldiers are constantly learning games. They go through games day and night. And then one day they find out the game is for keeps. And whether or not they win the game depends on how seriously they played it in practice. The general and the colonel made their way through the crowd. This is Corporal Powers. Powers? Congratulations. You did it. Thank you, sir. One out of five. That's not too bad for a start. Tell me, Powers... How did you manage to keep going? Well, sir, I just believed it. I just decided I wouldn't be captured. Powers, if it should ever come down to the real thing, I don't think you would be captured. Young man, be honest with yourself. Have you reached a standstill in life? Is each day just like any other? Are you worried about your future? And most important of all, are you feeling dissatisfied with yourself and your personal development? Well, if this description or any part of it fits you, it's just about time you investigated the opportunities waiting for you when you enlist in the United States Army. Every man in the Army has a skill, and more often than not, the Army taught him that skill in one of its fine schools. The Army offers an interesting present and a secure future with plenty of promotions along the way. And above all, the Army molds you into a man, a man whose family, friends, and country are proud of him. If you think you can measure up, stop in at your nearest recruiting office and see if you can qualify to wear the mark of a man, the uniform of your United States Army. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army, and this is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>